Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is the first video I am filming in 2024 and I'm so excited. I hope the new year is treating you really, really well so far. I personally love this time of year because I'm able to go back and reflect on the previous year and see what I want to take with me into the new year and what I want to leave behind. So today I'll be sharing the 10 things that I am not purchasing in 2024 from luxury goods to just everyday items. And I know there's trends out there of like de-influencing or just being more mindful with your money but I truly want 2024 to be a year of growth primarily in my bank account so I am prioritizing that and travel this year and I am very aware that overconsumption is a massive issue across social media and I really want to be mindful of what I'm sharing with you all what I'm recommending to you all because I am personally cutting back on a lot of things as well not only because we are in kind of like a looming recession but I just want to just not consume a lot of things because I find that I don't really need a lot of things typically. But you get the point. Let's just jump into the video. I made a list on my computer and this is in no particular order. The first thing on my list are card holders and I actually put this on my no buy list in 2023 and failed miserably. I ended up getting two different pink card holders last year, one from Hermes and one from Chanel, but I am truly done with card holders. I do not need anymore and i am actually probably going to be letting go of some from my collection so if you want to keep an eye out on my shop emily dow page that's where i typically sell things from my closet but as much as i love card holders i am tapped out i'm good i have enough more than enough really next up on my list maybe a lot of you can relate to this are must have amazon items and if you're on tiktok you've probably come across some of this content before but at the beginning i was very tempted by all of the must have Amazon items or you need this like first off no nobody needs any of that junk truly but from time to time I do come across an item where I'm like huh I may actually need that there was like this garlic chopper or something along the lines of like making mincing garlic a lot easier and I thought to myself yes I need this but I put it on a list that was probably like months ago at this point and I still haven't purchased it because I just use my knife and just mince garlic the old-fashioned way. So a lot of these like gadgets are like one purpose uses and I just feel like it takes up so much space. I don't have a huge kitchen and I don't have a lot of storage. So every little square footage counts. Whenever I see anything that I'm very tempted by, I'm gonna put it on a list wait at least a month revisit it and see like do i still need this item because chances are it's a no next up we have low quality clothing and or shoes and this is pretty self-explanatory i know a lot of fast fashion pieces are really terribly made these days which is really unfortunate and i'm not saying to cut out fast fashion definitely just be more mindful of what you're consuming like you look at those prices on websites like revolve for example and it could be a hundred dollar shirt but when you scroll to the details or what the item is made of it's literally polyester which is like essentially plastic i believe so i'm definitely just being more aware of the types of materials that i'm purchasing and same goes for shoes i don't really buy shoes that often but i have noticed that a lot of shoes like there's a lot of brands i can think of off the top of my head that i've seen on instagram that are oh so cute but it's not great for your feet at all it's not comfortable it literally just looks cute for the gram and that's it like i just want to avoid that at all costs but again just being more mindful of what i'm purchasing now on the flip side of low quality clothes and shoes my other no buy category is actually going to be designer shoes so while i do love designer shoes most of them tend to depreciate unless you never wear them and just resell them but i don't want that to be the case when it comes to my shoes because i feel like i already have a lot even though my collection is pretty small but there are a handful of shoes that i still don't touch and i feel even worse when they are designer shoes for example i purchased these hermes boots last year and they were so uncomfortable to break in i feel like i'm still breaking them into this day but i also don't gravitate towards them because they hurt my feet so i have to know like what i'm doing throughout the day to even plan to wear those shoes and i find that that's the case with a lot of designer shoes even with my iran sandals like those are comfortable up until like the third or fourth hour and then there's like zero support and you're like my feet hurt and the only exception to this is if i find a very good pair of heels 
that I know are gonna last forever, such as a pair of like Amina Muwadis or Jimmy Choo's. But realistically, I cannot be spending $800 on a pair of shoes. So. Next up is a very random category for me, but it's hats. And I love how other girlies look in hats. I actually bought a few hats this year and I wear hats maybe once every few months. So there's no reason for me to keep collecting like baseball caps or bucket hats when I know I'm really not gonna be gravitating towards that. And I don't know what it is, but I don't genuinely like having hats on my head. It just feels off to me. I feel a little suffocated. I don't know if anyone else can relate. I can definitely wear hats and bucket hats if I'm outside, if I'm playing golf with Jeff or like going to a concert and it's like really hot like yes i will wear a hat in those situations but on the day to day i don't find myself willingly going out of my way to wear a baseball cap another thing i'm not buying this year are bougie soaps like bougie hand soaps you know the asops byredo all of those like i can admit they do smell amazing i have purchased some in the past but Honestly now, I'm just refilling them with soft soap <laughs> or like any like generic brand of soap because I do feel like right now I am just washing my money down the drain, literally. So as much as they are a treat, I will not be purchasing them for myself. But if someone wants to give it to me as a gift, I will gladly accept. I just cannot justify spending 40 plus dollars on a hand soap especially in this economy. Next up on my list are tote bags. I have so many tote bags. It is impossible for me to use them all consistently and they're all different materials. Some I could tell are higher quality. Some I know are gonna fall apart after like two uses. So I'm just not gonna be buying tote bags this year. I don't need a tote bag. For brands out there who use tote bags as part of their strategy to get people to purchase things because they get a free tote with purchase or they're trying to be more eco-friendly by offering you this obnoxious label of their brand on the bag. Can we just not do that? Or can we just make the logo smaller so it's more discreet? You know what I mean? I don't know. I know some people love logos on their tote bags. I personally would appreciate a cuter design with a smaller logo size, but that's just me. Or just This next one is along the same lines, but Lululemon belt bags. I currently have a black one and I have another one that's like in a very specific color that my old work gave to me but I recently got like the pink fuzzy one because it was pink and I realized how terrible the quality is and how terrible it actually would be on a daily use so I returned that one but no one really needs to have that many belt bags like I know TikTok has fueled the overconsumption of having way too many Stanley Cups, way too many belt bags, anything that comes in like millions of colors, you really don't need that many. I'm just over it. I literally just reach for my black one most of the time or just like a neutral colored one and call it a day because I really don't need to be switching out all the different colors of belt bags. I have other bags I'd rather use with different outfits. That's just me personally, but I will not be participating in purchasing any Lululemon belt bags this year or until further notice. Since we're on the topic of handbags, my next set of items are trendy mid-tier handbags. And I know that's very niche and I will explain, but when I'm thinking mid-tier, I'm thinking bags that are between like $150 to like $800, definitely under $1,000, kind of like that mid-tier luxury level. And this may not be applicable to you, but for me personally, I at least want to know that I could get 80% of my money back if I were to sell it. And it just doesn't seem like the case when it comes to these mid-tier bags. I recently purchased a bag pre-loved for about $800. And I know if I were to sell that, I would probably get like 400 max just because it's not as well known of a bag it's a very specific type of bag and i feel like at the time i just really wanted a bag so i justified to myself like oh i'm not spending 2k and up on a bag it's only 800 but at the end of the day i definitely settled and i should have taken that more into account and i didn't so that was a costly lesson for me. I haven't sold that bag yet, but that's not to say that there are no good bags in this range because there are a lot of great bags. But for me, knowing how I am, I do like having the option to flip bags or to you know rotate bags in my collection. And I know that's not the case for everybody, so definitely still buy what you love. Last but not least are unnecessary home decor. 
How many of us have walked into, let's say, a Target and walked by their seasonal home decor section and instantly like thought to yourself, oh my gosh, I need this, or oh, this would be so cute. And then you bring it home and you're like, this looks ugly in my space or it just doesn't work in my space. Yeah, I'm so guilty of that. So this year, I am not gonna be doing that. I have gotten better in 2023, but my weakness last year actually became things like little mini mystery box figurines, like sunny angels, things from Pop Mart. Like, I need to stop with that because I have way too many of them. At this point, they're not even decor anymore. They're just taking up space. So to avoid any unnecessary home decor purchases, I am also going to be adding that item to a wish list and then checking in a month later to see do I still need this? I did buy some really great home decor during Black Friday and I've been loving it. But as far as like the trendy seasonal home decor, I'm done. I cannot. Like I don't even have enough space to display everything that I would want to. I'm happy with what I have right now and I can just spend that money elsewhere. But that's all I have for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you're not going to be buying in 2024 and we'll just keep each other accountable. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!